I'm really excited to be here to share with you about life operation, and I'm also very glad to to find that life operation has been picking up, and more and more Western developers have been paying more attention to life operations.、Um, just a little bit more about my background. So I'm the senior vice uh, uh, president of. Yuzu Interactive on the corporate development side,、uh, so that's just more on the、uh, forming the strategy cooperation with third-party game company and bring their games to global market, and also uh, I'm uh, uh, sourcing the deals in strategic investment and also potentially M&A. And meanwhile, I'm also leading、uh, two teams in our company. One is、uh, publishing to China market, and also the other team is publishing to Japan market, because、uh, you know they are these are two of Of the biggest market globally, so I'm here to share with you a little bit more about our one of the very recent game we re,、uh, we released into the market. It's called Era of Angels. So,、uh, User Interactive actually founded ten years ago as a browser game company, and it entered mobile game business ever since 2012. And it begins to go to global market, doing global publishing、uh, back to five years ago. So we released our first game. League of Angels in 2013, and the game accumulates a revenue of 600 million US dollar. And we also published、uh, another game two years ago called Legacy of Discard. That is a game actually developed by、uh, our partner,、uh, a studio in Beijing. And that game actually achieved over 43 million US dollar monthly revenue every month in the global market, and 70% coming outside of China. And that game is now still the number one action RPG mobile game.、Uh, I mean, ranked by the、uh, grossing. In the worldwide, in the, especially in the in the Western market, so how we make success as a as a game company is,、uh, I think, is mostly because、uh, life operation.、Uh, so this is、uh, why I'm here. I'd love to share a little bit of experience that we have been doing in in operation. So a little bit more background about Arrow of Angels. So this game is released in January、uh, this year, and it's also a、uh, magic fantasy style and then more action RPG game、uh, developed by our own studio. And this game, after release in only one week, we actually got、uh, about eight million US dollar in the revenue、uh, from China mainland market. And we just released this game in China mainland.、Uh, And we are about to publish it to global market very soon in the coming quarters. So, just to share with you some、uh, performance of this game, we actually uh, uh, achieved about uh, uh, about twenty five、uh, million US dollar in the first month of the release of this game, purely from mainland China. And also from the download wise, we achieved ten million download in only two months and ranked. Basically, top ten in all over the major Android markets in China. So there is also a challenge of、uh, operate games in China market because there is no Google Play in China. So there are like、uh, hundreds of Android channels markets there. So we 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 need to divide. So our definition of live operation actually include the. Service that we provide to the to the users, and also include the operation events that we need to serve the hundreds of Android channels in China. So that's a little bit different from what we see in Western market. So these are some chart to show you how we rank in Chinese Android channels. Okay, so. Uh, the philosophy of life operation actually will be starting from understanding our users. So this is actually a very typical chart to show you how we classify the the、uh, users into、uh, different groups. So basically, we classify them into three groups.、Uh, from the massive wise, you see general consumers、uh, who will be、uh, appealed by the theme of the game and who doesn't want to, you know, invest that much money into the game, but they, you know. Would rather spend more time to achieve some excitement and engagement from the game. And in the middle, which is actually very very core users, are the premium consumers. They have the habit to spend money in the game, but they tend to be really reasonable and rational in spending money. So those uh, discount and uh, lower uh, package uh, promotion package will be extremely important for this group of consumers. 
And in the middle is actually a very, very core consumers. We call them whale players. So this has been an extremely important group of users in China, especially for micro and hardcore online mobile games for a long time. But we also see an upcoming trend that ever since Game of War became uh, dominating in strategy game in Western market like three years ago, we also see this upcoming trend that whale player has been also uprising in Western game market. So this is a, I want to highlight a bit in the later. So basically, you see these uh, three group of consumers. So um, here, I also want to highlight one thing that I find is very different from Western game and uh, Asian Pacific game is that for. Chinese games specifically, it's very, very important to build an ecosystem or ecology in the game. Or for, for Western games or for games in Japan market, it's actually more driven by the content. So that means you need to have a really engaging storyline and also uh, continuously updated content to keep the users back to the game again and again. But not like that. In China, we, we tend to need a more like an economy system that the users of different groups, they can form a, a societies in the game and they can fight together with each other. So you see the, the desire of these three group of people, they are different. They are looking for different things in, in, in the game. So basically, the general consumers, they're just uh, following the trend. Whenever the, the game is popular in the market, they tend to follow it. And also, it will be very important for them to find the, the excitement that they can for free or uh, those those game challenge and doesn't need to be very high barrier but after some some uh, practice or some time they can gradually grow their character in the game but for those core consumers it's very important when they form a society they tend to be the leader in the society so similar to game of war they are the king in the game so they tend to battle they find the excitement battle with each other, like the similar level, the other king from the other guild, together in the game. So they, they enjoy a lot in the leadership, so they spend huge money, but they don't want to spend huge efforts in fighting again and again the dungeons or boss again and again in the, in the game. In, instead, they tend to share the resources they gain in the game to, to the guild members. So this is sort of like uh, the consumer in the core heart, they, they uh, invest money into the game to make everybody in the whole society, the general consumers and premium consumers, survive together with him or her in this game. So that's a, that's a small society, exactly how it works in Chinese game. And as far as I know, Machine Zone's producer also borrowed this idea from Chinese game. So that's why Game of War is very much different from Western game back to that time. Uh, they, they just got released. But now we also see uh, more and more developers are uh, actually borrowing these ideas from Asian games. OK, so the philosophy. Uh, after targeting those uh, uh, three classes for users, we also design our uh, life operation events uh, on this uh, different group of people. So basically, on the on the bottom side, you see that uh, there is a matrix. Uh, on the uh, vertical, you have a, a payment amount, and the horizontal, there's a accumulated playing time. So we divide our uh, life operation events also into three different criteria. One is ice breaking. That is, uh, from its name, you can, you can very easily understand. It's more like attracting those general consumers, want more consumers to get involved in the game. And also, it's very important to let these users to come back to the game, in the, especially in the first week. Um, also, uh, to, to help them to build up their habits to become a payment user. That is very important in the first week of launch of the game. And a little bit trick here, I, I also see it in a lot of uh, uh, Western games, like in Prairie's game, Fish Doll, and Gardenscape. They have been using this trick. Uh, so the trick is uh, people tend to pay not for the stuff they are truly wishing for. They tend to, instead, they actually prefer to pay the things they think they have already possessed. So this is actually um, 
very normal in, in real life. But what you see is like, for example, in Fishtown, they create this uh, small uh, coin bank, a diamond bank, like a, look like a fish in the game. And it will never uh, use this, achieve to some level, they collect some diamond from the, from the game. But they didn't get it immediately. Instead, the game provide a bank for them to store this, all of these diamonds they get for free. And to some extent, this, this bank just got full. And then it cannot hold more diamonds from the game. And then what the users need to do is that they need to spend like $3 or $5 to, to restore these diamonds and collect them from the bank. So back to that time, the users will not would not think about it, they would just rush to buy it because they think the diamonds in the bank is theirs, it's their own money. So they spend money to buy something they think already theirs. This is very, very important. So this trick is also very much used in the, in the uh, events here. So you see, so basically, we do a, a very special event in our game area of Android called Level Investment. So basically, we design an investment system for the users. They can invest like 300 diamond into the game, and they can return some money like, by gradually whenever they reach down some level. So for example, they invest 300 diamonds, and when they reach uh, to the tenth level, they can get like eight diamonds back. So we tell them specifically, when you reach 60 level, you will get a, re uh, a return, uh, like. A, 100% return out of your money spent into the game. So it's very straightforward. People would think, oh, this is just some low-hanging fruit that I can get from the game. Why don't I spend the money? Why don't I spend the 300 diamond? So the good thing is that people come back to check their return, right, to the game. And they also have a clear goal. Hey, I want to achieve this level immediately because by that time I can get my money back. So this is a, a very interesting trick, actually similar to what you see in Fishstone and Gardenscape. Okay, so the first payment reward, we, we very much, uh, it's very common in, in games already. So basically, it's very useful to, uh, to change, uh, build the habits of uh, general consumer into small payment user. So it's just a, a, a package, a promotion package, like only one dollar, everybody can, achieve, uh, uh, can afford that. Uh, so at the beginning, so one different thing in Chinese games is that usually when Whenever you enter the game, whenever the users haven't started to pay, the first banner they are going to see is the, it's like a first purchase the bonus package, something like that. So it's a lot of inducer. It's not only the operation event. It's more like a, how do you how do you present the users, and also a special event I would like to introduce to you is a worst collection event we launched in some uh, festivals in China. So for example, in Spring Festival. Uh, in China, we, we actually, every family in China, we eat dumplings. So we provide a live operation event, like you can gather, uh, you can make dumplings in the game. So to make dumpling, you, you actually you need to get some meat or vegetables or some, uh, some uh, pounders uh, to get them together to make the dumpling together, right? But to, how do you get this old material? Is that by collecting some words, so uh, some uh, lucky words in Chinese, like sky, like bless, like uh, God, some, some word like that in, in Chinese. But to collect these words, they need to fight with some specific uh, boss of, uh, in, in the dungeon or some monsters. So this is like a uh, limited event uh, when there is a festival coming to the, to, uh, to the season. So this is also very uh, useful when uh, there is some uh, seasonal festival into the, into the market. We, want, we try to make this trick for the users to, you know, they have some uh, driving targets to, to achieve and also they can, they feel they are some, there are some special package for them during this season. So very interesting thing, very important thing about this ice breaking, uh, just to summarize, this is more like a ghost attempt to, you know, turn general consumers into payment payment consumers. This is a very important first step. And whenever the payment happens, it's found. Actually, people usually will, will continue paying. So that's a very important, we call it ice break. And also, payment users tend to you know, get back to the game more often. Okay, so the second 
<clears throat> in the middle, you see more like a longer term events. So these are actually providing more uh, medium package with discount for those, uh, uh, for those premium consumers. These users, they have been experienced the pain users. So they, they choose very carefully from the, the different package they see. So this is uh, uh, the most uh, you know, uh, uh, hard to retain users. You need to really think about how you retain them in the, in the game. And we, we actually provide uh, majorly five different uh, operation events in this game for those users. So one is daily discount package. So uh, this, this has been uh, very much majorly what the Japanese game developer and uh, publishers are doing in their game. So uh, we provide a lot of uh, daily discount package to the to the users in Asian markets. So basically, that is to increase the continuous payment and also make the users feel they have been treated very well in the game. And the second is the daily limit pa limited package. That will be usually uh, uh, connected together with the daily task. So there are some special dungeons open in some specific time. So there is a, a very important thing to link the, the task and the, the reward you provide to the users. And also this will be uh, related to the, to, the, uh, to the time of the, uh, the, the gameplay. So for example, at 8 p.m. to 10 p.m., the people tend to, you know, the DAU tend to be bigger. So uh, we, we uh, designed some highly competition, like PvP tasks during that, that kind of time uh, for the users to beat together, for, for example, for a dungeon boss. And this dungeon boss could be really hard to fight. Only those users who has paid a lot in the game can, can truly beat this uh, very rare monster in, in the game. And whenever they, they beat uh, the monster, they got uh, really rare items uh, from the, the world server. And also to get this, uh, like a, maybe it's like a chest or a loot. And to get it, they also need to buy a limited edition of a key to open it. So that key can, can charge the users like very expensive money and they would just uh, rush to buy it. So this is a very interesting uh, you know, uh, payment operation event that we usually would provide for those paying users. Uh, very importantly is to you know, need to induce them uh, uh, on the uh, PVP and the competition. So the uh, third is uh, actually a, a daily accumulated uh, payment. It's actually uh, very straightforward because uh, for those users, like I just mentioned, those paying users, they, they tend to, after they form the habit, they tend to keep on paying. So there is, uh, we, we literally put this uh, straightforward in Chinese game that there is a target that whenever you achieve to some higher level of payment, you get a better reward discount. So this will be also illustrate a little bit more on our VIP system, which is uh, uh, very special from our Chinese games. Um, there is also another thing very similar to subscription fee. It's a monthly package. So basically, the users uh, uh, will be provided by a package that they can they can buy at like several hundred diamonds, and then they can collect rewards every day uh, when they come back to the game in the following months. So this is more to you know to increase the uh, active user rates uh, in the, in the game. And also, there's a diamond investment, very similar to the level investment. It's just the most difference that the reward will be better, and the users doesn't need to, you know, specifically reach to some, some level of experience in the game to, to achieve the, to claim the reward. So this is actually also for both increase the DAU and also for increase the median payment of the, of the game. Uh, there are some special events too in this game. So these special events will be more tailored for those high-priced uh, package for those more uh, core consumers in the game. So basically, we provide in Air of Angels like six uh, special events. One is daily challenge. Like I just mentioned, there will be a extremely hard challenge in the server every day, and people need to compete to get it. And also, 
uh, the total payment rank. So Chinese people really is uh, more competitive. They like to you know, show off and they like to compete very much. So we, we provide a lot of leaderboard in the game. So they rank, uh, we rank them in the total payment, in total consumption, con consuming, and also the, uh, the, the experience and level in the game. So by this different leaderboard, people would, would clearly see where they are ranked in the server and also give them a very clear tutorial, how do you get to the next level? So we also uh, embed some uh, operation events into this ranking system. So for example, one very interesting thing is uh, we provide a consuming rank in this game. Because you don't you not only want the users to invest their money to buy diamonds, you also want them to consume the diamonds. So we actually, every day, we, we release this uh, leaderboard on consuming rank to show whoever consumed their existing diamonds the fastest. So this is also a good way you know, to make sure the whole economic can run balanced in the game. That is very important. You don't want the diamond to be inflated and nobody spend it. OK, so this is very straightforward. And also the daily competition, like I mentioned, uh, there could be a, a competition every day for the users to about some very specific dimension, like character level and energy consumed for all of them. So just, just remember, Chinese people and Asian people, they really like to compete with each other. So this might be a little bit different from Western players, uh, but this is also a core thinking that uh, we've, been, uh, we've been trying to do to, to merge with a lot of our systems here. Um, in, in, the, in the later part about our VIP system, I'm going to elaborate to you more because uh, that is uh, uh, very, uh, very core in the uh, human uh, desire in Chinese game players. So we, we did a lot of leverage in this. Okay, so this is a VIP benefits uh, design system we have been doing in China. Uh, we see a lot of Western games also trying to do a VIP system, but not so much. So as you can see, in total, in our game, we have 12 level of VIP system. That's much more detailed than Western games. And also, this show you the, the, the different uh, levels of uh, expenditure that the people need to pay in the game to reach to a specific level. So we actually start from VIP level one, who only need to spend like $1 in the game for the promotional first payment package. Two, in the VIP level 12, over 50,000, that's about uh, 10,000, uh, less than 10,000 is about 8,000 US dollar, uh, that kind of level. So when we, uh, when we operate again, it's very important to look at the payment user's retention rate. Because like I mentioned, payment user, they tend to get back to the game more times. Um, in Chinese games, still now it's still like two percent of well player pay for the ninety percent of the revenue. So they are extremely important. So when we design this whole VIP system, we tailor made the, the service uh, towards these core users. So you can see um, we basically provide more benefits about uh, saving their efforts and providing them more uh, benefits of growing faster in the game uh, or providing some uh, advantage in the rule uh, in the game for them. So for example, they can, they can carry more, cats, uh, more, more pets in the game together with them, or they can gain like 10% uh, uh, or 30% plus experience uh, in, improved by beating specific monster. So there's uh, uh, different layers of growth uh, acceleration in the game for the, for the VIP users. But specifically something important here is to it's two things. One is right to start a guild. Like I mentioned, the core users, like, they like to be the king in the game. They like to lead the other users. They don't like to battle by themselves. They like to lead a team to battle with each other. So it's very important when the people reach the, uh, let's see here, it's a VIP level four, they have the right to start a guild by themselves. And also, very importantly, it's show off in the game. So you see in the VIP level five, this is actually a very, very important start point of uh, 
uh, VIP, uh, of our payment users. So in the VIP 1 to VIP level 4, they are pretty much more premium users, common premium users. But after above VIP level 5, it's three, we will, we will launch more specific uh, service for the users because they become to be, uh, they, they, they start, the users started to become more privileged users in our game. So in VIP level 5, we provide a nobly symbol that the users can carry on their character. That is to show off to the other users, hey, see, I'm VIP here. And in some games, when the user reach to some uh, extent of VIP level, when this user, specific user, they go online, the whole server will see a message from the server of the game. Everyone will see somebody, for example, uh, Mark is online now. Mark, your king is online now. So feel about that. <laughs> so, okay, so uh, in VIP level nine, actually we provide the right of message for the users to the whole server. So usually, uh, you know, in Chinese, uh, uh, like I mentioned, the ec ecology and ecosystem is more important in game design. So we provide basically service in game much more than than uh, Western and also than Japanese games. So it's very important for the users to interact with each other. But they can usually, they can only interact with their friends or their guilds in the game. But reaching some level of VIP will provide them very privileged right to send message to the whole server. So uh, this is also one thing very special in our game. And Besides this whole VIP system, we also provide a service. It's, it's just a from the, you know, from the uh, feature-wise, we provide some better benefits for the users. But from the back end, we also set up our customer service team towards different tiers of VIP. So for example, when, when people reach to VIP level seven, they will actually have special customer service providing like a one on uh, one to 10 VIP users or one to 20 VIP users. So for those uh, more general consumers, they will face a customer service, like a one uh, customer service person will face like 300 users daily, something like that. So for those uh, very privileged uh, users, we also provide very special service for them, like when it's birthday for them, we even send a birthday gift for them offline, or gather an offline events for they to enjoy like a cruise together with our operation team. So we did a lot of uh, real life uh, customer service rather than only online. And also um, we have, a, like a, we call it GS team. So this is also very special in Chinese game operation. So the GS team is actually different from customer service or VIP customer service. This person in GS team, they're expert in game rather than just a service provider. They play the game very well. So they actually become the business partner for the players, for the VIP players in the game. They play together with the players in the game. So Whenever there's a server, there is a VIP user, they dominate the server, they will find they will not be lonely. You know, the true lonely thing is that you find no enemy in the server. So by, by, that, by that time, we have our GS team to play together with the, become the business partner with the privileged uh, users and battle together with them, or either side by side or either from the, the other side. And to some, to some extent, when in one specific server, there's only very, very few VIP users and they cannot find any effective PVP. Then we sort of combine and cross server. So that's uh, how we do, you know, a lot of, uh, we call it uh, cross server events in the later of the game operation. So this is basically, you know, the, the core philosophy that we've been doing in our games. Um, so I think that's uh, pretty much of it. Um, you know, so life operation is uh, what I think is actually a lesson that we can never you know, finish learning by ourselves by a, a single discussion. But uh, I really wish to you know, have more chance to discuss with you. If you have any question, uh, you can feel free to contact with me. Uh, so the easiest thing is, uh, easiest way might be we either 
you know, found a partnership in our global publishing, or probably we can we can talk more on the strategic corporate side. So yeah, I'm willing to yeah follow up on that. Uh, hi, thank you for your presentation. My name is Nick, and uh, what I would like to ask you if is uh, what is the period from install to the first uh, payment which should break the ice? So like amount uh, amount range of time. Okay. okay, so <coughs> this is a really good question. Actually, um, that depends on the style of the game. So, uh, as I mentioned, we are a we started as a browser game company. So, in our game, the the economic actually grows really fast. So, on average, a user can grow to uh, can achieve two hundred levels in just one day in two hours gameplay. So that means that the users can start payment in the first day, in the first hour actually. Thank you so much, Hilly. That was wonderful.